What's going on, everyone? This is Andrew O'Connell with Pristine Capital coming at you with yet another market recap video. It is March 5th, 2021. Please like this video and subscribe to my channel if you enjoy this content, and I will continue to make it for you. Today, we're going to be talking about the price action and the indices and just how crazy it was. Some crazy whipsaw action. We'll go into the hood and check out our sectors and style factors. We'll talk about some of my trades for the day. I had a bunch. And we'll wrap up with some options order flow. But before we jump in, quick risk disclaimer, nothing in this video should be construed as investment advice or recommendations. Please follow your own trading plan, your own risk parameters. And last but certainly not least, do not YOLO your entire account into any one of my trades. All right, let's jump right into it. So today was a wild day. It was one of those... This entire week was one of those where you finish it up and you're like, wow, it is Friday. I am so ready to just dive into a drink right now. And <laughs> you're just, you know, happy that it worked out the way it did. Um, so we had the S&P 500 finish up 1.84%. We had the NASDAQ QQQ finish up 1.51%. We had the IWM small caps finish up 2.12%. And we had the Dow Jones finish up 1.83%. All right, so let's check out our S&P 500. This had gotten to a really tumultuous spot where it was like, okay, everyone, we're in a clear, defined, intermediate term downtrend here. And we'll talk about this when I go more into my trades. But yeah, today my game plan, you know, we talked about this in our pre-market webinar was like, all right, we're getting a little bounce in the pre-market. We're going to fade the bounce, throw our hedges back on, and you know, just be ready to rock for this you know, downward day right now. And that ended up being the right move. We got that whoosh lower, but then we ended up getting, you know, dip buyers came in and, you know, really saved the day. We ended up closing within the monthly value area, which is fantastic. Um, we switched from a downtrend to a neutral trend and you know the first thing you have to do to get back to an uptrend is you got to go from the bearish trend to the neutral trend that is step one and then going from the neutral trend to the bullish trend so that is really good sign um let's take a look at the cues cues you can see are certainly not in a bullish trend they got a nice little bounce here but we are still below this monthly value area and we're below all of those key moving averages. Um, IWM closed just a hair or yeah, just slightly under this monthly value area. Um, so I guess technically, you know, still in its downtrend, um, but this one still looks okay. We held the 50 day simple moving average and we'll have to see if we can jump into value uh, next week. Um, then we have the Dow Jones which is usually the bridesmaid this week is finally the bride. Take a look at this. This is such a shift from the norm here. The Dow Jones actually looks better than the, all the other indices. We're trading above all the short-term moving averages and we're trading above the point of control for the month. So, you know, all you Dow bulls out there, you know, great job this week. Um, but yeah, like I said earlier, Let's go into this hourly chart here. And you'll see what I mean. Okay. So, yeah, in the morning, it was like our right, game plan. We're going to fade the bounce. You know, market is in this downtrend, you know, all that, all that good stuff. And you can see fading the bounce was the right move. And we ended up plunging into the abyss. So, in the morning... Um, you know, we plunged all the way down to this like 3730 level. So it was looking pretty dire. It was looking like it was going to be a wipeout day. Like I was like, man, are we going to finish down like 5% on the queues or just, you know, really just wipe all these bulls out? Um, and yeah, the dip buyers ended up coming in. They supported the market. And you can see this was a level pretty much what kept happening over the past couple weeks was We'd open up strong. You know, you can see here we're at the value area high. Then we fade throughout the day. You know, another day comes up. All right, well, we jumped into this uh, value area here. We made it up to the value area low. Fade. This was an encouraging close because 
but we actually closed at the first higher high of this downtrend. So you can see this level right here, um, this over here, right around this value area low, like 38.21, this was where we got rejected last time. So once we came into this zone, I was like, all right, let's see you know, how we do here. When this candle was developing, I was like, oh my gosh, could we do it? Or is this just gonna be like from here, just like boom, a fade? And we ended up closing, you know, right on the highs. So really strong finish. So this is definitely like, okay, there's a good chance that this was at least um, the intermediate term, like a swing uh, low in the market. So really awesome stuff. Um, let's pull up our sectors and style factors today. This at one point, this heat map um, was just bloody red. It looked awful. Everything like all these tech names are really red, you know, the whole nine yards. Um, Tesla was one that I mentioned in the morning. Like Tesla's in so many of these ETFs that you gotta, you know, just be conscious of it because, you know, the way Tesla's going um, has typically been, you know, the way the rest of tech has been going. And Tesla plunged, you know, down like over 7% at one point today. And the bottom really just fell out, at least temporarily. Um, let's see a Tesla. You can see it ended up putting in a really nice hammer candle though. So looking, looking solid. Yeah, this is really nice, positive breath day. And we had a bunch of different standouts. So we had energy looking awesome. Um, these financials continue to look awesome. Um, Google as well, just showing its relative strength. So yeah, really nice day in the market. Uh, for sectors, yeah, you can see same exact thing. Energy up over 3% today. Regional banks up uh 2.62%. What I will point out in terms of the laggards, uh, this cannabis YOLO ETF still finished down 2.58%. Keep in mind that that YOLO ETF, it includes the cannabis, uh, the Canadian names, which are just dreadful, you know, don't even touch those. Um, and then it also includes the United States names, which I'm super bullish on. I think those are awesome. Um, but yeah, you can see the ARC funds, they're still really under pressure. It's so like they had nice comebacks, but you know, ARKK still finished down a percent and change. ARKW still finishing down. Um, but this is definitely looking like um, this might be more of a tradable bottom. So if you look here, doo -doo -doo. ARKK. Yeah, this is another one completely slipped into the abyss here. You know, it was approaching that 200 day moving average. And a lot of dip buyers came in. So we'll see. You know, five years from now, are people going to be happy they bought this ARC fund, you know, 30% off the highs? I'd think so, five years from now. We'll have to see. I tried picking the bottom in this thing maybe like two trading sessions ago uh, when I got stopped out, you know, very quickly. I would definitely come back for some of this ARC fund. Um, and then if we take a look at our style factors, you can see here. Yeah, really strong day. We had high beta finishing up 2.44%. We had the cyclicals finishing up 2.61%. And then the laggard was the international momentum only finishing up 0.38%. So let's talk about some of my trades for today. So today, like I said, I came in like, all right, we're going to fade the balance, blah, blah, blah. It's going to be awesome. Um, so you can see here yesterday, you know, if you remember from my video, I tried to take a bunch of things home. Because I thought we were pretty oversold. Um, so in the morning, you know, right on the open, I pretty much dished out everything I had taken long. So I exited my Google, exited my Pinterest, all just for like scalp winners here. Um, and first thing, I entered a Q's hedge. So at 9.32, bam, I'm in some Q's puts. Um, I took the April puts for $12.30. Uh, I had a TLT diagonal put hedge. And I closed a third of that out, you know, took a target in it, um, closed it for $2.17. I had paid $1.83. So when things started looking really ugly, I started thinking like, okay, I might need to get even more short today. So let me wait for a bounce and then I will short into that bounce. So I noticed things are looking horrible. Uh, I'm talking to some of my buddies and they're saying like, yeah, man, I just closed out like all my longs. Um, 
you know, this market looks crazy, blah, blah, blah. And I'm seeing on Twitter, um, you know, people that had shorts on just doing victory laps. Like, here's all my executions of all my shorts, like blah, blah, blah. And I started putting the puzzle together. One of my buddies, um, you know, we haven't talked about really like going heavy short in a long time, you know, in our text conversation, like we're suddenly talking about shorting stocks and I just see all these things coming together and I'm like, this could likely be that capitulation bottom. Um, so sure enough, we got our bounce. I added more to my hedge, um, into the bounce and then the market really just kept going into lunch. Cause at first I was like, all right, we might get a really low volume bounce. So I'll come in with more hedges market kept, you know, acting really well. Um, so I ended up closing out um, my ad for a small loss. Um, I paid 455 for those, closes out for 370. Um, and then I closed out the hedges I added on earlier for a gain. So I closed those out for 13 bucks. I had paid 1230. It's pretty much on these hedges I just scratched and broke even, but it was very helpful psychologically to have those on the books because I was able to think more clearly about what I was doing. So that's the thing with the hedges, like, you know, definitely can help when you're in a pinch. Um, once I saw that strength and I put, you know, the puzzle together of like, oh my gosh, this might be the low. Once we get that turn, that's when, you know, for me, you really have to put, um, you know, the pedal to the metal, essentially, you have to strike and take some positions. Um, so I entered... And what's awesome, one of our pristine capital members actually brought this stock up and raised it to everyone in the room, Micron. Uh, Micron, Semi's name looks really good. My go-to Semi's names were AMAT. I had been watching this one for quite some time. This one also looks really good. Um, AMAT here. And then Maxer is another one that I've been watching. Um, Maxer, not quite as strong today, but I believe this is like a smaller cap name, so I could definitely see why. Um, this one also looks really good, but still close a little bit down. I was looking at those, but then uh, when one of my members brought up Micron, I was like, oh my gosh, this one even looks even better than AMAT and uh, Maxer. So yeah, this one you know, held that 20-day simple moving average like a champ. It closed above the monthly point of control as well. So this one is just in a really nice um, bullish trend here. So I added a calendar spread uh, for Micron. And this is definitely important, you know, if you're into trading options, you know, useful tidbit of information here. Um, so for these options, what can happen? You know, I hear so many people say this. They're like, I bought calls, you know, towards the lows and the stock went in my favor and I still didn't make any money. So I don't know if this ever happened to you, if you're watching this video, um, but the reason why is because, you know, when the market's going crazy and everything's super volatile, there's a lot of implied volatility baked into your options prices, whether they're puts or calls. Um, so what can happen is the stock moves in your favor, but that implied volatility comes out of your options contracts and you're like, wow, I didn't make as much money as I thought I would. Or like, I didn't even make any money at all. So for this one, I went with the calendar spread where I got long the May 95 strike call, but then I shorted the March 95 strike call against it. I really, I love doing the calendars. I think they can be, you know, a very elegant structure. Um, so I put those on for $3.81. That one, you know, finished out really nice into the close. I added a SPY uh, 380 by 390 by 400 call butterfly for $3.58, added that at 240. Um, and then I got long some win calls. This is another uh, Macau recovery name. I have some Las Vegas Sands calls. I had taken a target on half the position. And now we just got a really nice uh, pullback in some of these names. So like win, um, there's some good news about it today, too. I think they got uh, their sports book approved. But, um, yeah, above the 20-day simple moving average, it's above the monthly value area as well. It's held up really nice during this uh, corrective sequence in the market. Um, then the other thing that I did, let's take a look here. What was it? Yeah, so I separate out my stock and my options trades for everyone in the room. 
Um, so I got long. So I closed out my Google and my pins uh, for scalp winners, like right on the open. But then I took FRX, um, the SPAC, for $10.90. So shout out to my buddy Matt, um, who called this one out. We were discussing, like, you know, some of these SPACs are very cheap right now, and there's actually a pretty good opportunity in them. Um, in this company, they're merging with a company called Beachbody. And this one, it closed up, you know, a dollar from where we executed on it. So this one looks really good. Uh, you know, it's fallen from grace here. You know, whoever was buying it at like 1820, that's honestly like shame on you if you were doing that. But at, you know, 1090, 1030, even here maybe, you know, definitely a much better uh, risk reward. So that one ended up closing really nicely. Um, and there's a couple SPACs that I added to throughout this whole, uh, you know, corrective sequence. So we'll see how those go when the flows turn back on. Because you're going to see a lot of these names when they're going like, oh my gosh, negative 15% in a day, negative 20% in a day. That's really just because the stock has gone no bid. Like there's nobody bidding for it. It's just all selling pressure. Um, but once the market turns and it's like, you know, flipping a switch, you know, the buy programs turn back on, you can see some of these things, you know, they really do perk up and they'll come back to life. You know, if a stock got clipped, you know, 50%, that's going to take a long time. A lot of them will need resets. But you will see like as the market comes back, It'll be like, oh my gosh, this stock went up 7% a day or like 5% or whatever it is. So that was the case for this one, FRX, where like, you know, the buy programs just turned on at some point during the day and boom, this one just huge move. On the lows, it was $10.13 and then it closed at eleven eighty nine. So really impressive move there. Um, and then I also took... I had to make some tough decisions. There were a lot of stocks that looked really attractive. Um, I ended up taking Twitter. Yeah, so I got long some Twitter as well. Some comments for $67.14. Purchased these, you know, towards the close. Twitter is a name. I absolutely love this name. I love Twitter, love the product, um, and love the business. You know, this one is definitely, I've done a deep dive on Twitter and I used to own Twitter for about like, you know, 30 bucks. I traded this one a lot throughout 2020. This has been like one of my better names, but at some point I just kind of lost the plot and exited Twitter. And then it really had a, it had an incredible run. So I was telling everybody in the room, like this is pretty much like your second shot at Twitter here. Um, so I took this one into the close. This one, it's below the 20 day, but it held the monthly value area really nicely. Um, so we'll see what happens. I did spend like half the day watching deer. This one I was very close to initiating a position in. I posted this one in the room, you know, for anybody that wanted it. But um, yeah, deer looks really good here. It uh, pulled back to the 20 day. You know, really nice bounce today. Just looking very strong. Um, so let's pull up. We'll really quickly check out our options order flow. Oh, where is it right here? This is my YouTube channel. <laughs> Yeah, so today's options order flow, we had you know some put players coming in in the morning. Tesla has become a battleground stock where I'm just seeing a ton of volume in it. Normally, I do not see this many puts. Now, it's like an equal distribution of puts and calls. It used to just be like call bombing this thing, spamming it. Um, now, we're getting a big mix. You can see this was an incredible execution for this player that bought these ARC calls. They bought these out for 2023. They picked them up at 943, you know, when this stock was getting really ugly. So this, I'm sure this player is like very happy with uh, their execution on that one. Um, let's see, we have some Netflix coming in, some Apple. You know, this was towards the lows. We had some players coming in with some heavy hedges for Spy. You know, some hedges for the Qs. Um, yeah, so not really like a variety of names today. If you look, like it's a lot of like just Tesla and Facebook, Netflix, all that. Some Zoom players coming in in the afternoon. These Zoom guys, maybe they're going to be right. I think these guys are out of their mind. Maybe they just know the fundamentals very well. Yeah, it is pretty oversold. Yeah, they came in with some calls. We'll see how Zoom does. 
Um, let's take a look. Yeah, some cues calls. This is very interesting. So these came in after the close. Look at the size of these SPY puts. So these are for March 19th, 36.4 million, 72.9 million, and another lot of 72.9 million. So somebody was like, you know, putting on their Armageddon hedge. And, you know, to be honest, it might not even be that. This person might have like, you know, a, a $10 billion book and they're just throwing on some hedges. And maybe for them, this is nothing. Uh, but that's definitely, you know, really big size compared to what I usually see. Um, so, yeah, a lot going on with the options order flow. But yeah, today was such a nice way to go off into the weekend. You know, that is why I absolutely love trading. I love investing because you're always learning something new. Um, you're always trying to piece things together. The game is constantly changing. Uh, so I absolutely love doing this, but I hope you guys were all able to weather the storm these past couple weeks. Uh, I know they've been very tough, you know, being in this downtrending market. Um, but yeah, I think the market, you know, might be starting to turn here. We'll have to see. But, you know, really nice day. And I'm glad you guys were all able to make it through this week. Um, you know, and at this point, we can just have a good weekend um, and relax a little bit. So that being said, hope you guys all had a great trading day. And I will see you all next week.